Okay. Yesterday we had done how the constitution of South Africa had been framed and how it turned up how to be one of the best constitutions of the world. Now today we are actually going to study the Indian constitution, how the Indian constitution was framed. Now we were under British rule and from 1858 onwards, after the revolt of 1857, British government had passed a number of acts but it could not, you know, they tried to save themselves, but they could not satisfy the Indians. And it was for the first time in 1934 that the demand was raised by the Indian National Congress for a constitution, that India also needed a constitution. Then in 1938, Jawaharlal Nehru formulated the demand of a constituent assembly. He demanded that there should be a constituent assembly. Now, what is constituent assembly? It is actually an assembly of elected representatives who would perform this task of writing the constitution. Because it's not everybody's cup of tea. Everybody cannot write a constitution. So certain leaders, you know, certain representatives have to be selected and who would sit and write together the constitution. Then in 1942, the British government recognized that Indians should frame a new constitution by themselves. So British government realized that constitution of India should be written by the Indians themselves. Okay, and our leaders, they did not hesitate to write the constitution because while participating in the revolts and while participating in the provincial legislature, you know, they had already had a lot of experience of, you know, constitution. They had gained a lot of experience, especially those leaders who had been working under the British. They had gained a lot of experience, so it was not difficult for them to write the constitution. Then they were also inspired by the French Revolution, the ideals of French Revolution, then the British parliamentary system, the Bill of Rights that was introduced in the USA. Okay, all this inspired them, and this is the way, you know, slowly and gradually, you know, step by step, you know, a constituent assembly was framed, and 299 members who were elected from different parts of India together sat and wrote down the constitution. They started writing it in 1946, and in November 1949, the constitution was finally written. Okay, now, if you think it was easy writing the constitution, especially during the period when there was a lot of conflict and chaos going on in the country, we had not still attained independence, we were fighting for our independence. Plus, India was a huge and diverse country, a very huge country like India with so many religions, so many customs, so many traditions, so many languages. And the country was divided on the basis of religion. So keeping the interest of all religious groups in mind was also a difficult task. Then in 1947, you know, India got it in, uh, independent, but at the cost of partition. Okay, so there was a lot of, you know, people had been, a lot of people had been killed during the partition. Then the British government did not merge the princely states. India was divided into a lot of princely states. Okay. And they all had their own ruler, they had their own rules and regulations. So it was difficult merging all the states with India or Pakistan. And there were certain who wanted to remain independent. So all that was difficult to uh, decide. The future of the country, you know, was not at all secure. Okay, poverty was there, merging of princely states without any constitution, the sources were defeated. So, they faced a lot of problems, but still, in 1949, finally, the task was completed and the constitution came into effect, you know, from 26th January, 1950. Okay. Now, how, what are the steps that went into the being of making a constitution? 1928, Motilal Nehru had, you know, drafted, prepared a draft. Draft is a rough outline. So the outline had already been prepared long before independence, that is in 1938. Then in 1931, during a session of Congress in Karachi, 
a resolution had been taken on how independent India's constitution would look like, and it should include these features. And what were the features? One was universal adult franchise. That means everybody should have the right to vote. Then right to freedom and equality would be given, and to protect the rights of the minority. Those groups of people who were less in number, they had to be protected by the constitution. Then finally, the constitution as constituent assembly. It came into being in 1946, and it had to 99 members. And they included all these three points in the constitution. Now the next question that arises is that even the constitution has been framed and it has been seventy years. So why should we follow what is mentioned in the constitution? Till now, seventy years of independence. Still, we are following the constitution. Why should we accept it? Now. Nobody has ever questioned the legitimacy of the constitution. Till now, no political party has ever challenged the constitution, or they had disagreed with anything in the constitution. Then it was framed by those people who represented different parts of India. Constituent assembly के जो members थे, they belong to different parts of India. Okay, they were from all corners of India. so everybody has put in their effort okay so the constituent assembly represented the people of india not any particular area okay then assembly represented members from different language groups caste classes religion and occupation so nobody can challenge no other group can challenge because every group was included and it worked in a very systematic open and consensual manner because whatever has been written is all whatever debates went on whatever discussions went on while framing the constitution everything has been recorded and because everything has been recorded so there is no need for there is no doubt there is no controversy until now we have been following the constitution no party ever has challenged the constitution Okay. The preamble and the rest of the values of the constitution we will break tomorrow. So I think this is enough for today.